Welcome to Big Pool Discipleship 101, The Bible in a Year, Week 7. We'll be discussing Numbers 3 through 17, from the Levites to Aaron's staff. In Numbers 3, why did God choose the Levites instead of the firstborn to be priests? How did they prove their loyalty when Israel built a golden calf? How was Israel's primogenitor, the laws of the firstborn, more just than other nations? How was Israel God's firstborn? How does the law of the firstborn now apply to Jesus and the church? In Numbers 4, name the sons of Levi. What were their various duties? What years of age did the Levites serve? In Numbers 5, what was the percent added to restitution of a wrong? How did the ritual of unfaithfulness protect a woman from false accusation? Did it leave any punishment up to God's perfect justice rather than human injustice? How could this be a commentary on Jesus and the church? In number six, how did God open priestly service to other tribes? What was required? Do you recognize the priestly blessings still used today? In number seven, how are offerings different than tithes? In numbers eight, who laid hands on them when the Levites were ordained? Is there significance to this? At what age did their apprenticeship begin? When was mandatory retirement? In Numbers 9, what is twilight? When did a day begin? When was the second Passover? When did the Israelites move camp? In Numbers 10, what were the trumpets for? Why do we use bells instead? Is transportability a difference? What were the ritual words for when the ark moved or came to rest? Does that give permission for ritual words in the church? In Numbers 11, what do we learn about complaining? In Numbers 12, what do we learn from the rebellion of Moses' siblings? Is there a lesson for church leaders here? In Numbers 13, why did 10 of 12 scouts give a bad report? What's a lesson from Joshua and Caleb's report? In Numbers 14, is Israel's rebellion a commentary on democracy? Protestantism? America's rebellion against England? Is Israel leaving Egypt related to the Protestant Reformation? Or America's revolution? In Numbers 15, do we moderns bristle if God prescribes an offering? Why? What is an unintentional sin? Why was a Sabbath breaker given the death penalty? What was the purpose of tassels? In Numbers 16, what does the rebellion of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram teach us? Should we be surprised when there are conflicts among church leaders? Is there a proper process for addressing accusations of corruption among church leaders? For the sake of peace and unity, what must happen? In Numbers 17, what is the significance of the budding of Aaron's staff? How important is it to God that we respect the appointed offices in His church? Well, that's it for this week. Next week, we'll be doing Numbers 18 through 34. Until then, God be with you. 